I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast here in Indianapolis ahead of the NFL Combine. We take a lot of your questions on, this, on the Locked On Steelers hotline here on today's episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets by winning any $5 bet on FanDuel. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started all right Steelers fans so a uh, bit of an update uh due to uh due to circumstances out of everyone's control we weren't able to actually talk to Omar Khan no one was uh we're hoping to we're hoping to see him on Tuesday we'll see what happens um but uh we will you know we will get to that when that happens so uh, I'm still here in Indianapolis made the drive down on Monday I'm sitting here Monday evening uh, and I figured let's go through some a lot more of the, the calls that we've been getting because every day we get more and we appreciate all those who do call into this show. As always, you can get your question on this show by calling 412-223-6644. Leave your name, where you're from, and keep your question under a minute and you get your chance to be on the show. So I figured we'd lead off with a question that kind of feeds off of the energy from yesterday's show, talking a lot about center after the cutting of Mason Cole, but also looking into the combine. So with that, Take it away, Bill from Concordton, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Bill from Concordton, Pennsylvania. I think the draft economics comes into it for the first round pick. I think it makes more sense to draft a tackle or a defensive back because they're high ticket items later on. And you'd get that fifth year. You, the center, you don't really pay that much for. What do you think? Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Bill. And that's a good question. As always, call it 412-223-6644 to get your question on the air. Um, appreciate the question. And it's a legitimate one because the economics of this of, of the situation do play into effect. And also just the overall value of the position in today's NFL. Um, many, many experts out there look at tackle and corner as more important positions than getting a, a great center on your on your team. If you get a great tackle, you have a especially if you get a great left tackle, you have your blind side of your right-handed quarterback protected. If you get a great corner, you take you could take away an, another team's top receiving option. It can, it can give you a lot of a lot of things to do on defense. That's for many people that's a pillar of what great defenses need in today's NFL. Center is still very important and people, you know, don't I think I don't think it's a disrespected position, but I think there's different conversations about what center does nowadays with the dink and dunk passing offenses of the NFL, and especially also with the increasing athleticism of edge rushers like TJ Watt, like Miles Garrett, like Micah Parsons, like Max Crosby. Those guys are are forcing it to, you need to have offensive tackles that can keep them from getting to your quarterback. And those are becoming the premier defenders. So tackle means you need to have the premier protectors. So, there is a legitimate question there, Bill, and it's a good question because you look at those you look at those three positions. Yeah, I would say that if you were to rank the importance of getting those right, I'd say tackle and corner go hand in hand with each other, and, and centers kind of after that. But I ask you this though: What will be the biggest hurt piece if the Steelers don't get right this next upcoming year? If they go into next year, and now that they've released Mason Cole, if they go into next year with another Mason Cole like center next year. You're going to get a lot of pressure up a gap. Can he pick it? You know, whoever your quarterback is, Mason Rudolph, they're going to face pressure right up a gap. You're going to, if you, if you have more bad snaps, you're going to have a lot of plays ruined that way. Whereas last year you already drafted one of your top tackles in Broderick Jones. You're, you already drafted a really good corner in Joey Porter jr. Why not spend a high pick at center? And I think that that's where the Steelers are going to look at things. Now, here's the other thing part about this. If you're, 
it's it's a unique position the Steelers could be in this year because there could be a, very well be a serious run at quarterbacks. We know that there's a lot of people suggesting that you know Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, all those guys are going top at ten, maybe even like top eight or top five between the three of them. There's also a chance that a guy like JJ McCarthy could sneak up ahead of where the Steelers pick, and that would work for the Steelers. Hey, four quarterbacks, get them off the board, uh, you know, because they weren't going to have a shot at the first three, and I don't think JJ McCarthy's the kind of quarterback that they want to draft right now, but. Um, I, I, when that happens and with how deep both cornerback and offensive tackle are and how many wide receivers I think will go off the board, the Steelers will get a good chance at a first round, a legit first round graded p- player at either of those positions. But the question will be how many cornerbacks are cornerbacks are off the board by the time they get their pick at 20, how many tackles are off their board at their pick at 20. And, and if you're saying it's the fourth or fifth cornerback or tackle each versus the best center in the group, that's where you have to weigh, and that's where it'll come down to the Steelers, best player available, which is why you know we, we, we often talk about that's the best way to approach the draft is to take the best player available, is looking at, hey, are the fourth and fifth center uh, uh, tackles and corners, are those just as good as or better than the top center in this draft class? And that's that's always a really tough question to ask. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a person, like, I still kind of am figuring out the way I do big boards and the way that I put things together. I mean, I have my process, but you know, every year I try to learn something else with how I, how I study and how I compare positions and how I compare players and the, the, the traits that are good and that are bad and that, you know, feed into things. And so, you know, my process is far from, you know, it, it is imperfect. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the process that I work through to get where um, I, I make my rankings. And, you know, last year I felt confident about my rankings. I'm sure in about another month, month and a half, I think I'll feel confident about these, about the rankings that I put out again. Um, uh, but center is is a tricky thing. Now, if you have a center who can be a superstar player, it changes everything because, you know, you look at, you know, guys like Jason Kelsey and, you know, he's about to retire. Look, look what he did for the Eagles for a decade. You know, he was a six time first team all pro type of guy and it, it solidified the offensive line. It led the charge that Andy Weidel is now trying to build for this for the Steelers after he helped build it for the Eagles. So I, I look at that to answer your question, Bill. I think that corner and tackle are more important if you're getting the top players at those positions. Like if, if, you know, JC Latham uh, is a tackle out of Alabama right now, he's like outside of Matt Alt and, uh, or Joe Alt and Olu Fashano, two guys, I think that are probably going top 10 and not going to be able to get touched by the Steelers. But after that, I think JC Latham is like the top tackle. And if he's there at 20, I even, even as much as big as I've been saying, go get your center. I think that JC Latham would be worth a, a, a your, your first round pick. I think in the, on, in the flip side, Terry on Arnold out of, out of Alabama, if he's sitting there at 20, I think he's another guy that like, man, I, I you know, I think it's, it's really tough to pass that up for a center. And so I, again, I'm not married to the idea that the Steelers have to take a center in the first round, but if they don't with the situation that they're in, unless they go and sign like a, like a really good center in the, in, in free agency, they need to get one it's a center in the draft who's probably going to start day one or start shortly after that. And there are only two guys that I think really fit that bill. And that's Jackson powers, Johnson and Zach Frazier. And I think Jackson powers, Johnson will be available at 20. I don't think he'll be available even at the start of the second round if the Steelers pass on him. Zach Frazier is going to be a very tricky pick because there's some people that rank him in the fifties. As far as overall players, there's some people that rank him in like the high thirties. So he could be a player that's that's gone by the time the Steelers get their the, their second pick uh, around at the fifty first overall selection, um, and it might require them trading up in the second round to get to get him. And that's where you have to ask is is get it is getting that center in the second round and trading up along with that first round tackle or first round corner. Is that the way you want to go about it? Or do you want to get your center in the first round, not trade up and not, not have to give up any of your other, other middle picks um, and then still get a really good corner or really good tackle in the second round. Because again, this class is very deep at those positions. You could still get like a Patrick Paul out of Houston at offensive tackle in the second round. You could still probably get a Mike, a Mike rain still of, uh, of, of Michigan there, uh, maybe a Kamari Lassiter out of Georgia in in this, in the second round, a Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. There's a lot of guys that I think could be really good for you. But again, I think the, the question that the, my answer to your question, Bill, is if it's a top tier, a guy that you think is an elite talent at those positions, not just a really good prospect, but like a true like, hey, that guy is going to be an all pro, you know, a guy at that position. Then I would say, OK, 
will you 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 will you, you'll take the the great corner or the great tackle that you don't don't normally get a shot at, and then you figure out what you want to do at center after that. So that's my answer to Bill's question. But we got some other questions, including questions about quarterbacks, because we always got questions about quarterbacks. But we'll get to more of that here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Don't go anywhere. We still have a lot to discuss in this episode. But first, I want to remind you, this show is brought to you by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. And this is what I've even said before. But after driving for about six hours to get over here from Pittsburgh, I hate people who drive, who drive slow in the fast lane. Get out the way. You drive me nuts. You slow me down. You cut off. I could have been, I could have beaten my time by about, about 20 more minutes if I wasn't sitting behind that sedan that just sat and drove 20 miles under the speed limit in the left lane next to a truck for about 50 miles. That was really annoying. And that's why sometimes I can need to get that off my chest. And the best place to get that off the chest is with a good therapist at BetterHelp Therapy Online. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp Therapy Online. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash. Locked on. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our, our discussions here. Uh, let's get to some of your questions here. Now, we had mul- we've had multiple questions about quarterbacks. So in this segment, you know, we're going to talk about free agent quarterback options and guys who we presume who will be in free agents because some of these guys aren't free agents now. But I lead with this first one because now he's been he's a news point right now at this stage of the NFL media. Here's Michael from Massachusetts. Yes. Hi, my name is Michael Pina. I'm from Massachusetts. And I think that the Steelers have a quarterback away from going to Super Bowl. I think we can get Russell Wilson for cheaper than people think, and Wilson wants to show that he still has it. I think if the Steelers get him, we'll be in the Super Bowl. Thank you. I watch the show all the time. Well, thank you, Michael. I appreciate you watching the show. And as always, just like Michael, you can get your question on the show by calling 412-223-6644. Now, let's talk about Russell Wilson. So the reason Russell Wilson is being talked about is because, yes, he's not a free agent yet, but it looks like he's going to be because he's due a lot of money from the Broncos. Um, and uh, and they don't they're not going to use him with the way that the, the season ended last year. They're trying to move on and, and figure something else out. So Russell Wilson will be a free agent. And if you're sitting there saying, well, why would he come to the Steelers when he could when he's probably going to be asking for a lot of money? Russell Wilson might not be asking for as much because he's due like thirty nine million ish dollars from the Broncos this year. So he knows he's going to get his money uh, from Denver anyways. So he could probably sign for a lesser deal if he re- if he really wanted to. Um, and uh, he's 35 years old right now. So, you know, this is kind of, you know, maybe his last best, last best chance to find the situation. And Russell Wilson in a, in a, in an interview this, uh, this, this past weekend, you know, talked about it and said, I am in my next five years, I want to win two Super Bowls. And so he wants to go somewhere and win. Now there's some people out there that think, why would he go to the Steelers for that situation? Because the Steelers, they're, they're, they, they've been sitting in, in sitting at, you know, making the playoffs and, and losing in the first round for the past seven years. And I hear that. But he also could be looking around and saying, what's the best situation that you could hop on and be the best quarterback right now on a team that has things around it that could that could help you win the way that he did win with the Seahawks? And there is merit to this. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I am. I repeat this. I'm not saying this is going to happen because a lot of y'all take this, this stuff out of context. But there are crumbs there are breadcrumbs to this trail that, that, that we could see here if Russell Wilson was to – if the, the idea of Russell Wilson coming to Pittsburgh. The only time he's won a Super Bowl was when he played with a great defense, the Legion of Boom with the Seahawks, and he had that running game with Marshawn Lynch, and they, and they were able to take over. And he did his part. It's not like he was just a passenger on the team, but he wasn't the driving force either. And I, I think that if Russell Wilson was to go to a team that likes to run the football, that it develops a really good offensive line that has an aggressive defense that can create turnovers and make big plays, and he, has, he doesn't have to carry – the team he doesn't have to throw you know 40 touchdowns he doesn't have to throw 40 50 times a game I think that could fit his mo and that might that that might be a good fit for what the Steelers are trying to do in this situation but the question will be will the Steelers go for that will he what there's so many things that get in the way of this one you know 
how much money will, will he want, you know, from the, from the Steelers? Money might not be a big thing because of the way his contract is set up with Denver. It's a, we, I don't know how to fully explain it in complete legal terms, but the bottom line is that with his contract with, with the Broncos, if they cut him, he's due, you know, 39 or something million dollars like that. And, uh, and he's due that money no matter what. And any money that someone else pays him just kind of takes away from what Denver owes him. So he's getting that money no matter what, which means he could sign for a very small deal with the team and still make all that money there. Um, you know, So unless someone comes in with a big contract and after his time in Denver, I'm not sure someone does, uh, there, there's room for the Steelers to make a move there. And that would make sense for the Steelers if they wanted to upgrade a quarterback and not spend big on it. And that could be like, a, hey, Kenny Pickett, beat this veteran. Go ahead, prove it, prove it, prove it that you that you've made those steps forward. Um, but also at the same time, I, I just I think that Russell Wilson he might be trying to pick a different team with a different set of weapons. Maybe he want maybe he goes to the Minnesota Vikings to pair with Justin Jefferson because we don't know where Kirk Cousins is going yet. You know, maybe he bounces around. Maybe he finds another team that needs a quarterback and is and has a few more weapons in in their in their uh, in their arsenal than what he likes with the Steelers right now. But I do think that there are there are merits to the idea. Uh, for Russell Wilson to pick the Steelers in that he wouldn't be asked to be the leader of the team. He'd be asked to be a good quarterback who makes smart decisions, which he can do. I mean, if you go back and look and, and look at this year, even in the Broncos offense, um, you know, he had 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. That's a good touchdown to interception ratio. And those numbers with uh, with what the Steelers might be able to do with the running game, that it continues to, if it continues to improve next year with Broderick Jones taking steps up, maybe they invest in another center or an offense, another offensive tackle in this draft class. If this offensive line becomes one of the better groups in the NFL and they run the ball like they did the last 10 games of the season this past year, I could see that being a really well balanced offense. And if the defense is healthy and you know and and and, and good next year and, and is similar to, the, to this past year where they they finished sixth in scoring with all the injuries that they that they uh, they suffered. That could be a team that could be dangerous. Um, so there's merit to that. I just don't know if Russell Wilson wants to do it. And I think the Steelers would entertain it if it worked out. I don't. I think the Steelers are not in a position to turn down talent. I just think that there's a lot of things that will get in the way of it as far as other teams that would want Russell Wilson and drag him in, in, and pull him away from where the Steelers would fit there. But we'll see what happens there. But what about another free agent quarterback, a quarterback that actually is going to be a free agent? Here's Parker from Indianapolis. Hey, Chris, this is Parker from Indianapolis. I have a question about uh, what your thoughts are on Gardner Minshew as bringing him in as a veteran competition slash backup. Uh, Gardner uh, seemed to do a lot of great stuff with Anthony Richardson in the offseason, and at one point Gardner Minshew was offered a college quarterback coach he spot before he got uh, picked up by Jacksonville. Um, I think you could probably get him for relatively cheap, and I think it would be great with Kenny Pickett. Uh, as a backup, as an additional spot in the quarterback room, but also could fill in if need be. What are your thoughts? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Parker. I think it's a it's a really good question. Uh, Gardner Minshew is certainly of those free agent quarterbacks out there that I think the Steelers could be looking at as solid veterans to work with uh, Kenny Pickett for, for, for the future. And uh, again, you look at Gardner Minshew, a guy who's now been in the NFL for multiple seasons, um, and, 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 you know, filled in for a large, large chunk of games this year. In fact, the Steelers, you know, saw him this year when they played, when they played the Colts, uh, because Anthony Richardson was, 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 um, was, was out at that time. But if you look at Gardner Minshew, um, I, I think, you know, he's a guy, he's 20, he'll be 28 years old this, this, this season. Um, you know, he had 15 touchdowns, nine interceptions, a completion rate of like 62.2%. He would make sense. Sure. I think that he's in the running for what the Steelers could be looking for at backup quarterback behind Kenny Pickett, or again, not even necessarily a backup quarterback, the competition for Kenny Pickett. I think that he's, he's, he's a young, he's a younger guy who you can throw in. Now you're knowing that even if he beats Kenny Pickett out in competition, he is still a bridge quarterback. He's not the franchise guy. If you get a guy like Russell Wilson, I think you're trying to hope that he can be the, the be the guy for two to three years uh, while, while you, you know, try to figure some other things out. But um, Gardner Minshew, that would be like a, Hey, Kenny, you got to beat that guy or it's over. And, you know, Russell Wilson coming in, I mean, it's the same, it's, it's similar in that, you know, if they don't, if Russell Wilson beats out Kenny Pickett, that's his time's done with the Steelers. But I think people would look at that differently as, hey, that's a Super Bowl champion quarterback who's, you know, been been one of the better quarterbacks in the league in some years that he's that he's played in the NFL versus Gardner Minshew, who is a career backup in the NFL. If you lose your job to him, 
um, that's going that I think that is a whole different narrative that would happen there. But again, I don't think Steelers should be afraid of, of challenging Kenny Pickett. And, and, and that, that's my bottom line about either of these choices. I think either one of them, if the Steelers could get them at reasonable prices, and when I say reasonable, I mean anything under uh, 8 million or under like, you know, this cannot be an expensive $10 million backup quarterback situation or, or quarterback situation. I think that they need to find a way to make this economic for the rest of the team. Cause they got other needs to hit. And uh, also I think that, you know, we talked about on yesterday's uh, episode about making a splash with free agency. The more you spend it, you know, you're at your veteran quarterback that you sign, the less you can spend on, you know, getting a top tier corner or a top tier offensive tackle or a top tier linebacker like Patrick Queen, you know, guys like that. I, I think that there's answers for the Steelers out there and um, getting a quarterback that won't be expensive fits. And I don't think that they, they, the Steelers should be afraid to challenge Kenny Pickett, because if if you're if Kenny, if you're afraid that Kenny Pickett can't handle the pressure of another quarterback coming into camp and beating him out then you should be afraid of him leading your team you know in in big games and frankly we've seen Kenny Pickett lead this team in big games down you know in the final moments not for entire games he still has yet to put together a complete game but we've seen him step up in big moments so i think if anything if you can find good competition in the NFL in free agency like a good veteran to come in and push Kenny Pickett and if he rises to the occasion great that means you saw something out of him but if he doesn't, that means you have another veteran, a veteran in the NFL who you know you can kind of play that balanced style of ball that you want, run run the ball more, win with defense, and just say, hey, vet, don't lose the game. So point being, the Steelers should be keeping all their options open at, vet at veteran quarterback that aren't too expensive right now. Kirk Cousins is out there, but Kirk Cousins is going to cost a pretty penny to, to bring in, and that's going to ruin uh, their other plans at free agency. But Russell Wilson, with his current contract situation, Gardner Minshew with just him being a career backup, those are more reasonable spots. So is Ryan Tannehill. And also, for those who are probably sitting there saying, why isn't he saying his name? Mason Rudolph also, also fits the bill uh, of a guy who they could definitely afford. But who will they sign? There's going to be a lot of process to get there before we start, to, before we see how free agency opens. It could be very interesting to see what move the Steelers make there to, to finish that out. But we have another question here that we got that we want to talk that when you get to the offense, we'll do that here on the other side of the break here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We still got more to discuss. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by FanDuel. There's always great chances to win on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. If you're like me, football season being done doesn't mean I'm done with sports. FanDuel gives you so many ways to play with the NBA, the NHL, college basketball, and so much more action every single night. There's a new game that you can get you get your winnings on, and you can do a lot of you can do that by a lot of different ways. You can make quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive prop bets, and so many more ways to win. And new customers, again, if you join FanDuel today, an app you can download right to your phone and get to playing right now, you can get $150 in bonus bets by just hitting your first bet of five dollars or more. Again, five dollars or more hitting your first bet gets you $150 in bonus bets, which you can use on other same game parlays to build up your winning. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Back here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, we're going to keep it about the Steelers offense here. We've talked a lot about that with offensive tackle, center. We talked a little bit of corner, but quarterback. Now we talk receiver here. George from Connecticut has a good question I think is pertinent to the Steelers' current situation. Take it away, George. Hey, Chris. George here from Connecticut. Big fan. Uh, I have a question about the offense, and uh, more importantly about our third wide receiver. Uh, I didn't think Allen Robinson cut it out at all, or Calvin Austin, but he also has some potential later on in his career. Um, do you think we maybe get a wide receiver day one or day two in the draft, or maybe even bring a guy like uh, Tyler Boyd? Thank, thank you, and uh, uh, George, great question. And honestly, yes, I do think that that's going to happen. I don't think a day one pick. I don't think a, a first round wide receiver is coming to the Steelers this year. I think that they they're going to use that pick on corner, tackle, center. That's that's where they're going. That's where they're going to get there. But there are some really good wide receivers who could be. Uh, who could be, you know, second and third round. You know, Mina Collins is on ESPN on NFL Live the other day, and, and she said this isn't a great 
wide receiver class. It's an incredible wide receiver class. And she's right. Uh, the two people I had on the picture there in the uh, the, 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 the the image I had there for uh, displaying uh, Georgia's question on the right uh, outside next to Allen Robinson and Calvin Austin were uh, uh, Roman Wilson out of Michigan and Javon Baker out of Central Florida. Uh, Roman Wilson, I think, will go second round. He's a great route runner, showed some great tape in, at the Senior Bowl. I think that he would be a, a heck of an, an addition. And if the Steelers, again, we're not saying they're trading De Deontay Johnson j just just yet. Uh, we were exploring that option in last last year's or last week's uh, last week's one of last week's episodes, but. I think that Roman Wilson's a type of route runner who could get open consistently enough that if you don't pay Deontay Johnson, which I don't think they will after this next season, he could be your 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 really good route runner opposite of George Pickens for years to come while you pay George Pickens to be your number one wide receiver. So he fits that. Javon Baker out of Central Florida is a guy who I think could be a dog in the NFL. His build, he's tough. He goes up and gets the football. He runs route well. He's, he's, he's strong. I like a lot of what he brings to the table. I also like Malachi Corley out of out of uh, West Western Kentucky. And in fact, if you check out the Wednesday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast, I go over a lot of those options with James Rapine uh, as we break down and preview stuff at the combine that we're going to be looking at this week. But there's several options at at, uh, at at in the draft this year that the Steelers should take a look at. And I'm talking second, third, even fourth round. I think they can get some really good players this year. But that name that you said at the end of your call, I think. There's a lot of merit to that. Tyler Boyd is such a good fit for what the Steelers need right now. A veteran wide receiver can line up in the slot, can get open, can be trusty, and won't be too, expense, uh, too, too expensive. And this way, if you don't move on from Deontay Johnson, your top three receivers are Johnson, Pickens, and Boyd. And then you can still have Calvin Austin. And yes, Allen Robinson, you know, if they can work out a way for him to come back for like $2 million a year, great. Everyone's happy. But I think you still want to upgrade that position from what Allen Robinson was this year. Uh, and, and maybe this, that, that's less about Allen Robinson and more about just like how bad the Steelers offense was, uh, you know, with their their chemistry uh, with the, in the passing game. Uh, but I think if you bring in a Tyler Boyd, that's a veteran wide receiver who can add to your room really quickly. And if you move on from Deontay Johnson and get and draft a, a young wide receiver, I think it gives you a chance to say, hey, Boyd can be your number two next to Pickens while you see if Calvin Austin matures and if this rookie receiver you draft this year mature. And, and that gives you some space there. And again, I don't Tyler Boyd's not going to cost you a whole lot of money, maybe eight million dollars a year, uh, you know, over two years. That, that's a good rate for a veteran wide receiver, and I, I think that's another thing the Steelers should take a look at in this offseason is getting a guy like him in the, in this free agency process as well as addressing it in the draft. And, and listen, like there's going to be – um, there, there's going to be a lot of options in in both areas. You know, I don't think the Steelers are going to go after a Mike, a Mike Evans, a Michael Pittman. Those guys are going to be way too expensive, even like a Calvin Ridley. But Tyler Boyd makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I don't want I don't want to say Michael Thomas because you know that guy was a top receiver at one point and then you know kind of fell off. But he he's another guy. You know, at 30 years old, he'll be he'd be an option there to at least be like a get a short contract. Um, you know, but I, I just I think that Tyler Boyd fits a lot of needs very well for the Steelers. And also there's the obvious connections. He's from here. He played at Pitt. Uh, you know, he was just in Pittsburgh. I remember I tweeted about him attending a Pitt basketball game and there were so many Steelers fans saying, come home, Tyler, come home. And I'm just like, oh, man, I, I, I feel you. Because also like Tyler Boyd, like he was there was a time where he was the best player Pitt had, you know, for a couple of years. And he was really good, and he's been very good for the Bengals. He's torched the Steelers a couple times. So, um, you know, I, I think that that's something the Steelers should consider. But third wide receiver is important in, in, in this field. Now, how important is it in Arthur Smith's offense? I think that's a whole other question, too, because our, we've talked about how Arthur Smith loves, loves to run 12 personnel, where it's two running backs, two, two, two wide receivers, or no, excuse me, two wide receivers, two tight ends, and a running back. And with, you know, Darnell Washington and Pat Fryermuth, how much do you use a third uh, a third wide receiver in this system. Um, you know, and if you want to use two running backs on the field at the same time, how often do you use three wide receivers with those guys out, out there? That is a tougher question. And, and I think that that's also where the Steelers need to look how much they want to invest there. But also, I think even if they feel like they're not going to use a lot of, uh, you know, a, as many three receiver sets as they have in recent years because of, you know, how Arthur Smith wants to be able to run the ball and use different skill play, skill sets, um, they also need to be prepared for injuries. Because remember, 
Uh, Deontay Johnson was on injured reserve at one point this past season. What if that happens to George Pickens at some point or Johnson again? Uh, you want to have a, a guy who's third who can come up and be that guy. And I think Tyler Boyd can be that guy who steps up for a few games as your second best option. So I like the idea of Tyler Boyd to the Steelers. I really like the idea of Tyler Boyd and a, and a rookie, maybe not in the first or second round, but I think there's some third and fourth round options that if, if the Steelers play their cards right, they can get a really good wide receiver who develops. And then maybe, you know, after John Johnson moves on, if they don't trade him this season, uh, you know, and he goes to somewhere else and makes bigger money, you pay Pickens, you have that rookie wide receiver, you have Tyler Boyd, you also have Calvin Austin. That could be the making of a good wide receiver room if everything else starts to come together in the offense but the combine week is here we'll see if omar khan or some or andy weidel or someone from the steelers is able to uh um is, is able is able to talk tuesday at the podium um at, at the combine if not we'll still have a wednesday episode here breaking down the pittsburgh steelers on the locked on steelers podcast i'm your host chris carter follow me on twitter and instagram at carter critiques read my work at the pittsburgh post gazette find me here on the locked on steelers podcast every Monday through Friday on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow. More on your Pittsburgh Steelers.